Okay, so the, there's this property of square roots that we're using that says that if I, and it works both ways, if I have a square root of a thing times a square root of another thing, that equals what? Uh, the answer. <laughs> the answer certainly. I don't know. Right. The square root of Yes, square root, the whole, like, uh, everything under one square root, x, y. Okay, how do we know that's true? How, how did we become convinced yesterday that it was true? Could we multiply the square root of x and x and y? Okay, we did a, we did, we did two specific tests. Just from exa an example that I just grabbed randomly from, from just my head, right? So we took two square roots uh, and said, well, does that equal the square root of the, if we just multiply the insides of the square roots together? We tried it. Turns out it did. Apparently, maybe we've forgotten a little bit. So like quick example, square root of 9 times the square root of 25. Now, that's the one I used yesterday. Times the square root of... Let's use something that has a square root so we can easily six. prove it. Six. six is even. People do that a lot. Uh, yeah, let's do four. Easy enough. Uh, is that equal to the, the question would be that is that equal to the square root of what? 36. 36. Because 9 times 4 is 36. Should we be looking at the board, taking down some notes, okay? Don't be passive here. Be active. Proactive. How did we show that the square root of 9 times the square root of 4 is equal to the square root of 9 times 4? Walk me through that again. Yep. So the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 times 4, or 3 times 2 is 6, six. and then 6, the square root of 6 again. Yeah, if you know uh, some square roots, you probably know the square root of 36 is 6. Uh, most of you, if the number was kind of big, which it was yesterday, I think it was like 225 when we did square root of 9 times square root of 25. Uh, 6 times 6 is 36. Let's take another way to quickly check and see if it's the square root. So if you know your square roots, you know the square root of 36 is 6. Okay, so the 6 is the square root of 36. It is the square root of the product of the inside. Yeah, you got it. So we know that's true. Uh, I can multiply square roots together, which should mean that I can take square roots apart, because if I were just multiply back together, I'd be right back where I started. Uh, so let me choose an example that doesn't help us. Uh, no, that would help us. I don't think I can. I think I can factor this in a way that doesn't help us. How can we factor 125? We're kind of going to go backwards. Like, here's 125. We're going to write it as a product of two square roots. How would, we, how would we factor 125? Um, What's a number that you know 125 is divisible by? Five. Shout it out. Five. 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 So it's five. definitely five. divisible by five. So let's just start there. We divide 125 by five. Comes out to be? Great. Um, well, I did. 25 times 5. Yeah. There's not really any other way to factor it. I mean, we can factor it at 5 times 5 times 5 and read it, but we don't want to do that. But when you hear that 5 times 25, what's special about 25? It's, it's a square root. Square root is 5. Square root is 5. Where we're dealing with square roots, right? And so we want to recognize 25 as having a square root of 5. So we write it as the square root. Of I always like to write the nice one on the left, and the leftovers on the right. Because the standard would be, let me show you why in just a second. The standard would be to write the whole number that's not inside the square root out on the left side and the other way. There's no, there's no, uh, it's not wrong right the other way, but let me show you what can happen. Uh, square root of 25 is 5, right? Just a second ago, this is the square root of 25 times 5. The square root of 25 is 5, so we just rewrite the square root of 25 as 5, we know that's what it is, times whatever's left over there, that's the square root of 5. Okay, so that's our answer. Now, is this any, like, let, let's, let's remember the commutative property. How about like two times three? Is that equal to three times two? Yes. Yeah, I can flip it around, no big deal. So shouldn't I be able to write the square root of five 
Times five? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't look as good, I agree. I don't know if I've been trained to think that or if it's just natural to the human eye that the, the one on top there looks better than the one on the bottom. And the other thing about this is, if I'm writing my answers really fast, look what can happen. Now what does it look like? It looks like they're both underneath. Yeah, it looks like they're both underneath there. It's the now, if I'm writing really fast and kind of sloppy, which I do, I look like S's. Uh, is that five under this square root with this one? Is it not? If I write too fast, and if I don't put a multiplication sign there, is it a 55? Like, there's just all sorts of room for confusion if we don't put the number on the left. Okay, so putting the number on the left is nice. One way to shorten up, or to, to get rid of some of that confusion <coughs> sometimes, some people will write the square roots this way. A little definitive end on it. It's a little down mark like that. That's up to you, that's totally a stylistic choice. But to be rid of any confusion, the standard way to write this would be whole number on the left, definitely outside of the square root symbol, okay? Whole number inside, there we go. All right. Ready to show me what you're made of? Yeah. All right, let's get out a piece of paper. Okay, square so root of 75. We want to factor that so that it's in two square roots, by two square root symbols. By the way, let's throw some vocab at you. That symbol right there, it's got a name. It's not called the square root symbol, actually. Okay, so no one writes this down. This is the symbol. The name for the symbol is the radical. Why? I forget. If I ever knew, it was a long time ago, and I don't remember. If I do a little research and present it to the class, I would you know why that thing's called the radical. I, I can't remember. But that symbol's not called the square root symbol, it's called the radical. So now we'll call it the radical. When I say radical, that's what I mean. Uh, so when we want to split it into two radicals, right? each one getting their own radical. Uh, so that obviously they multiply to 75, and one of the factors has a square root. Okay. So? 25 and 3. 25 and 3. 25 and 3. Of course, it uh, could have been 15 and 5. Mm. That doesn't help. 15, neither 15 nor 5 have square roots. 25 has a square root. Square root of 25 is? Five. Five, so we get five times the square root of three. Five times the square root of three. All right, this one we can, uh, you know, like if we were to multiply 25 times three, we get the square root of 75. We can do the same thing here. Square root of 60 times the square root of six is the square root of 360. Okay. Well, now it's one big square root again. But I can I can factor it in such a way now that one of the one of the numbers has a square root. Anybody? Four ninety. Ninety. Four times ninety. Absolutely true. That the square root of four times the square root of ninety is the square root of thirty-six. So that would be two times the square root of ninety, right? It's about ninety though. 90 have a factor in it that has a square root as well. So just do a 90. Don't tell me what you did with the square root of 360. Tell me what you would do with 90. It looks like Sean's ready for that. Uh, the square root of 90. It's, it'd be like 9.48. Like you, you ask the square root of 90? No, I'm asking like how do we split apart the square root of 90? Or is it possible to split, split apart the square root of 90 like we did with the square root of 360? So like we can take the square root of one of those numbers and Three. even more to simplify. Three times 30. Three times 30, but three doesn't have a square root, not a nice one. And 30 also. Josie? Oh, nine and 10. Nine times 10. Nine has yeah. a square root, a nice square root. So we have two times the square root of nine times the square root of 10. Square root of nine is three. three. Two times three is six, six root 10. Okay, can we go a little more directly? Yeah. How do we do it? Uh, just uh, 6 and 10. So, well, uh, square root, square root of, of uh, 36. Square root of 36? And then the square root of 10. That's 
two vertices, right? Because when you multiply by 10, it's for the zero on the end there. So 36 is going to be 10. 36 is 6, and there's a left over 10. 10 cannot be factored in such a way that one of the factors has a square root. So we just leave it, and the square root of 10, 6 root 10. All right. You should always be taking notes on this, just in case. Words of red do hard work. Don't wait until you realize you didn't get the right answer and then start taking notes. Just take notes. It's not going to take up all that much space. Write it real small. Then compare it to your your uh, review when you get it back graded. All right. So, what do you think? True. Or false. Notice, unless I've done my math incorrectly, 81 minus 25 is 56. Right? Yeah. No? 81 minus 56? No, I mean, is 81 minus 25 56? Like, is that yeah. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. okay, all right. Is the square root of 81 minus the square root of 25 equal to the square root of 56? No. Why do you say that, Grady? Because, What's that? You don't know how to explain it? No. Alex can explain it? Well, the square root of 81 is 9. Yes, it is. And the square root of 25 is 5. So five. it would equal 4. 4. That's absolutely true, right? We should get 4. So is 4 the square root of 56? No. No, 4 is the square root of what? 16. Okay, so hey, that, that does not work, right? The square root of 81 minus square root of 25 is not equal to the square root of? 81 minus 25. Right. So do you think in general, do you think this is a good rule to follow, that we would just subtract the insides and just write that as its own new square root? Is that a good, good idea? It's a bad idea, okay? Great explanation, right? It relies completely on our understanding of square roots, mathematics, right? Uh, no memory tricks there, no rules, just math. But what's another argument I could make? Remember yesterday, didn't I ask a similar question to this? Yeah. What's, the, what's a similar question that I asked you? Well, not <coughs> to say it exactly, but just like well, say maybe, um, I like the <coughs> argument that you said in the, like, the square root of zero. Oh, so you're, by argument I mean like proof that this is not true. This is an argument right here. This is so, just to, so that we don't take too long, like, didn't I, did I ask a similar question to this? Not just slightly different, like right yeah, about in this cross. region, it was different. Yeah, we, we tried to add them together yesterday. Yeah. Tried to add some square roots. Did that work? No. Well, you know, addition and subtraction are just like two sides of the same coin. Subtraction is just really adding what kind of numbers? Negative numbers. Oh, I mean, if, if adding two square roots together didn't work yesterday, why would subtracting square roots today work? Right? So there's another argument. There's another uh, explanation that I could use. Didn't work for addition. Wouldn't make any sense that it would work for subtraction. So good. So in general, the square root of something minus the square root of something is not equal to the square root of subtracting those things. Okay. What about this? True or false, and uh, come up with an explanation. Right, I'm going to take a page out of Alex's book. John, what, what do you say? I say it's true. 
why do you say it's true? And it's it, keep in mind that it's harder than I thought it was gonna be because I used the numbers I, I should have used. Should use some easier numbers. So what do you think? You said you said that um, if it works, if it didn't work yesterday for addition, then why would it work today for subtraction? Okay. If it worked yesterday for multiplication, so why would it work today for division? Multiplication, division, also two sides of the same coin. They're just gonna complement each other. Division is really multiplication by fractions. Okay, so why wouldn't why wouldn't that work? What do you think, Brady? Do you think kind of the same thing, or do you have something yeah, else to say? Same, same thing. Same thing. Like you could, you could just square root of those things. You know, like kind of square root. Well, you can, but it'd be hard. Who, yeah, we yeah, probably need a calculator. Uh, before calculators, if you wanted to find the square root, I mean, there's where to find square roots manually. Uh, calculus has a nice, really nice way called the Newton method, but uh, we're not going to use that. Uh, the square root of 32 used to be, before calculators, we'd have to go to a big old book, like this thick, it's full of square roots of numbers, out to certain decimal points, and just crack, up, crack open that book to square root of 32, look on the table and find you know, what the square root of 32 is to however many decimal places that book happened to have it to. Um, so you can take the square root of 32 in the calculator, divide it by the square root of 2 in the calculator, and what does that come out to be? Square root of 16. Which is? Four. So if we did this in the calculator, it should come out to be four. So we can try that, right? Just a calculator uh, argument. Uh, here, let's let's do this since I kind of fluffed that one up. Let's use some square roots we do know. So like the square root of forty. No, that's just over there. Let's use the square root of uh, thirty-six over the square root of four. If this rule holds true, this should be equal to the square root of what? Square root of 36 divided by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Oh. <laughs> Let's just take a look, see if that's true. Well, what's, the, what's the square root of 36? 6. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's 6 divided by 2? 3. What's the square root of 9? 3. Oh, I think it would be good. Right? I think that, that that's good evidence that it, it probably does work. Let's try uh, the square root of 81 over the square root of nine, that should be equal to the square root of what? Nine. Nine, 81 divided by nine is nine. Okay, the square root of 81, what's that? Nine. nine. The square root of nine is? Three. Nine divided by three? Three. Three, the square root of nine is three. Three. Okay, doesn't just work for things that happen to have an answer of three. Uh, let's say the square root of Uh, 64 over the square root of 4 should be equal to the square root of 16 uh, so 16 there okay let's try it out square root of 64 is 8 8 square root of 4 is 2 8, so 8 divided by 2 Six, which is four. the square root of 16 so he just showed it three times, right? Just three specific examples. That is not by any means a proof of something being true always, but let's call it good enough for us. Right. So what do you think? Do you believe it now even more so that the square root of 32 over the square root of two is the square root of 16? Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, that's handy because I don't know what the square root of 32 is, and I don't know what the square root of two is, but I can divide them, and that's the square root of 16, which I do know, which is four. Square root of 32 over 2, square root of 32 over square root of 2, equal to 16. In case, at least didn't quite close in your head, we can write that as like you have a square root divided by a square root, now it's the square root of the fraction 32 over 2, which is 16. Okay? Right? So, in the same kind of way, the multiplication can be together, taken apart, but the division works in the same way. Right, so, given all that, let's do a few practices. So let's practice, uh, you know, this is from yesterday. We'll practice, and some practice from what you just talked about. I'm using the, the square root of 96 to show you maybe a way to get at 
the simplest form with a little less guess and check. Okay? Uh, because right now, maybe you're just trying to guess, like, well, what's the biggest square number that goes into 96? So you try 4. Okay, that works. But then maybe the number that's left over, you have to simplify it even more and simplify it more and simplify it more. How do we, like, jump just right to the simplest form possible? Okay, we're going to do that by, underneath the square root here, factoring 96 all the way down to its prime factors. Okay? Uh, so I know 96 is a... Uh, is divisible by 2 for sure. It's even. Right. That's 2 times, and what's that? 2 times what is 96? Um, Four, 48. 48. 48. Yeah. Okay, so that'd be 2 times 48. So before I even write down 48, I'm going to start factoring 48. 48 I can divide by 2, right? So it can be 2 times 48 is times 24. Well, 24 can be divided by 2. Keep dividing by 2. So that's 2 times 12. So I'd write 12 here, but I'm not going to write 12, because 12 is 2 times 6. six. Okay, so I would write 6 here, but 6 is 2 times 3. three. Okay, well, I can't back to 3. So I'm, I've done it. It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. See what it did there? It's just called the prime factorization. We could we could do it with a tree, right? Can the factor trees before? Yeah. Yeah. And that's so I just kind of did that, but manually. Uh, so two times two times two times two times two. And uh, imagine this. Anywhere along here, I could just go uh, basically like this. Okay, that that gets the, its own radical. That gets its own radical. I could break it apart like that, right? That'd be the square root of four times the square root of whatever that other stuff is. And that's a good idea, because I know 2 times 2 is going to be 4, and the square root of 4 is going to be 2. But why not go bigger? Here's another two twos, right? So that's a 4, and that's a 4. Oh, that's 4 times 4. I know that's going to have a nice square root, just kind of by definition. And what's left in here? There's not really anything useful to come out of that. So I'm looking for. I'm looking at 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. The square root of 16 is? 4. 4. Notice that every time I have a pair of 2s, this makes sense. We get a 2, right? Yeah. A pair of 2s is a 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So we kind of do it and then undo it, multiply together, and then figure out what it is. So a pair of 2s is going to be a 4. Another pair of 2s is going to be a 4, which really, when we take the square root of this 2 times 2, we get 4. The square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of So um, it did take the prime factorization, but then we learned something new about simplifying square roots as well. Like if I find a pair of the same factor, the square root is going to be whatever that factor is. The square root of two twos being multiplied is a two. The square root of two fours being multiplied together is a four. The square root of five times five is five. There's not, there's not really a need to multiply 5 by 5 and get 25 and then ask, what's the square root of 25? Well, it's 5 because I just got it from doing 5 times 5. Yeah. Right? So the square root, when I have a pair of factors, they're identical. I know I'm just going to get the square root out of it. Okay. So you try that for 216 as well. 216. I happen to know that's 6 times 6 times 6. Right? So it, it, it could work again, though. I could do 2 times, well, what's that, 2 times 108, right? Well, 108, that's 2 <coughs> times 54. 54 yeah. Okay, well, 54, that would write 54 there. But that's 54 is 2 times 27. Oh, okay, well, that's, okay, that's 27. 27 is 3 times nine. 9, and 9 is nine. 3 times 3. So we just did the, the prime factorization of 216, which if we pair every 2 with a 3, you see it's 6 times 6 times 6. Okay. But uh, look at that. I could, like, as I start to break these apart into their own square roots, I could take a 2 times a 2 
and also bring over this three times a three. And then what's left square root of that? Two times three is six there. So it's, this is really the square root of four times the square root of nine. You see that? Square root of four times the square root of nine, which is going to be two times three. Square root of What times itself gives you that number? So square root of two times two, that's two. This is going to be a three. So six root six. Okay, who knows what the square root of 12 is? Nobody, because square root of 12 is not a nice number, right? But we can write it as the square root of what? Square root of 12 divided by it. square root of three. It's still not a nice number, but at least it's just the square root of little old three instead of the square root of 12 or the square root of four. Mess. How can we handle the square root of one fourth? Using the rule we just learned. Did anybody use the rule we just learned? Square root of 1 over 4. It's division. So we can use this rule, right? The square root of Square root of 32 and square root of 2 is the square root of 32 over 2, right? And it works in reverse as well. So the square root of 1 fourth, the square root of the fraction 1 over 4, is the same as the square root of 4 over 1 over the square root of 1. Ready? Let's look at this rule again. The square root of 36 over the square root of 4 is the square root of 9. How do we take 36 and 4 and turn it into 9? 36 divided by 4. 34, or 64 divided by 4. 16, 64 divided by 4, 16. The square root of 32 over the square root of 2, the square root of 32 over 2. I'm flipping around, it's just the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator there. So the square root of 1 fourth should be the square root of? 1 over, one over the square root of? 4 fourth. 4. What's the square root of 1? 4 5. No. Mm. Not half of 1. The square root of 1. 0. 0.25 or 1 fourth? 1. one. Square root is a number that multiplies by itself to give you the number. Square root of 1 then is 1. Square root of 4? Five. Square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. Square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. Which, not too surprised. 1 half times 1 half. Multiply straight across. 1 fourth. Okay. 